today we're brewing up some really fun Halloween DIYs. Hello my darling friends, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have y'all here today. Are you ready to go brew up some witch-tastic DIYs? And then we'll spend some time styling them. So go grab your magic wands and let's get to creating. We are going to kick off our first project today with a very simple, easy piece with stunning results. So we will need some of these plastic candy pumpkin buckets. I got mine at Walmart. Um, I've seen them lots of places though. So, and then I'm going to go ahead and remove the stickers. And to remove the stickers, I'm just using my heat tool. And if you heat the sticker a little bit, they just peel right off. Next, we will go ahead and cut the handles off because we are not going to need these handles. After getting the handles removed, I'm going to come in and cut out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And this plastic is pretty thin, so these cut out really well. I am using a very sharp X-Acto knife to do this, so if you use an X-Acto knife, please be careful because I definitely don't want anyone to lose any fingers today. So I will just continue cutting out all of these pieces, and then we will move on to our next step. So when you're cutting out the mouth, make sure that you go around the teeth. We don't want to cut those teeth off because I think that's part of what makes these look cute. Unless, of course, you don't like the teeth and then go ahead and cut them off. <laughs> okay, so here is what we have so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and take these outside and I'm going to spray paint them. The inside is going to be sprayed with this Rust-Oleum metallic finish and I'm using bright gold here. And then the outside I'm going to spray paint in this Krylon Fusion Black Matte paint and the reason I'm painting the inside with the copper color is because it's going to give it a nice glow when we light our candles in it but it also shines really pretty during the day when there is no candle okay guys so with our magic wand let's just take these outside and just like that ta-da they are painted <laughs> I really love the magic of spray paint. I love how you can just spray paint something and give it a whole brand new look and really elevate the overall finish. These turned out really, really cool. Moving on to project number two, we are going to create some really darling little witch hats for the jack-o'-lanterns that we just made. So for this project, you are going to need a couple of of supplies you're going to need this pattern and I will have this available for y'all as a free download the link for that will be in my description box we are going to need some cotton batting and some 
coordinating fabrics of your choice. I am making the brim and the cone part of my hat all in the same fabric, but you could mix and match these up if you wanted to, you know, just get creative and do you. So the first thing I'm going to do ahead, go ahead and do is trace out the brim pattern onto my fabric. And I am making four of these. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two at a time. And to do that, I just folded my fabrics in my fabric <laughs> into a fourth. You do need two pieces per hat brim. And don't forget to trace that centerpiece because we need to cut that out later. Before cutting the pattern piece out, I do pin all of my fabric pieces together just to make sure that they don't move around because if they move around, we could end up with pieces that don't match one another and we want them to all be exactly the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin them together really quick and then we can begin cutting. Now that we have our outer part cut out, we can go ahead and cut that center. And to do this, I just fold my fabric in half, repin it, and then just cut all the way around that little half circle there, and you will have a perfect round in the center of your hat brim. Now I will go ahead and separate my pieces because I did cut two at a time here. So I'm just going to separate them out and then make sure that I have wrong sides together. All right, let's set our hat brim pieces aside for just a moment and work on the cone shape. So I've gone ahead and cut mine off camera, but to cut these, you wanna make sure that you fold your fabric and then place one edge of your cone pattern piece on the fold and then cut that out because when you open it up you want it to look exactly like this and it's very important that you do that step all right let's move back to our hat brim now so i've gone ahead and cut out all of the batting pieces with that same brim pattern you that you want it to be the exact same size so now i'm going to go ahead and sandwich the batting between the two pieces of our hat brim. And I am going to leave this right sides out when I sew it together because I want kind of rough, frayed edges, kind of shabby, shabby edges on the corner, kind of rustic, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this piece together and then we can take it to the sewing machine and start sewing. So to sew this piece, we are only sewing that outer edge. You need to leave the center unsewn because otherwise you won't be able to sew the cone properly into place. And I am sewing this with a half inch seam allowance. All right, so the same thing for the cone. We're going to go ahead and fold it in half. I do pin mine, that's kind of optional. I ironed these so it stays really well held. And then we will just sew down that one edge. And then I will take that to the sewing machine and sew those as well. After I get all of my cone pieces sewn together before flipping this right side out, I am going to take my pinking shears and just cut some of that extra fabric off, but be really careful not to cut into any of your stitch marks because then you'll have a little gap in there. And the reason I do this is it just kind of helps eliminate bulk when you go to flip this right side out so that that seam lays nice and flat.
So I will flip this right side out and then I'm just gonna use my little crochet hook here or my magic wand <laughs> to um, push out that very tip part of the cone. Now we can go ahead and sew our brim pieces and remember to just sew the very outside edge only. I am also using a half inch seam allowance on the brim of this hat. And don't forget to do a forward and a back stitch at the beginning and end of your stitching so that you can lock those stitches really well into place so that they don't go anywhere. All right, now we have the brim all sewn together. I want to go ahead and fray out all of the edges on these. And to do this, I'm just going to use this sanding file because it makes it so much quicker, so much easier. Plus, I really feel like I get that super defined frayed edges when I use this technique. I really like how these end up turning out. I think it is so, so cute. And I do fray the front and the back side of this brim piece. After getting all of the edges frayed, I'm going to go ahead and just take my finger and pull out any loose strings. And then the strings that don't naturally pull out on their own, I will kind of just take my scissors across them and give them a little bit of a haircut. I don't mind a few strings poking out, but I don't want a whole bunch, a whole bunch on this. <laughs> Now we can go ahead and connect our two pieces together. So to do this, I'm just going to insert the cone through that center hole of our brim, and then I will just make sure I get these really well pinned together and then make sure my, my edges are all nice and lined up, and then I will clip it, clip it or pin it into place. And as I was doing this, I did realize that my cone piece was just a smidge larger in diameter than the brim. So I got a few tiny little puckers, which I thought was okay because it just kind of added a little extra character to our cute little witch hat here. All right, so after we get this whole thing clipped together, you do wanna double check and make sure that you definitely have your right sides together. And if you are unsure how to tell, you wanna make sure that when you're holding it just like this upside down that the, the brim piece is on the outside of your cone so that when we flip it, you'll get this nice clean edge. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and sew all the way around that circumference of the hat, the two pieces together. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yep. I know my words. <laughs> I've been talking a long time. <laughs> and this is our hat all sewn together. Isn't it cute? I really, really love this. Okay. So at this point, y'all, you can decide to leave your hat exactly as is. I think it's darling just the way it is, but y'all know me. I have to always do just a little tiny bit of embellishing and I'm not going to go overboard on these. I just want to add a few things. So I'm going to put some ribbon around the bottom half of our cone here. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure it and then cut my pieces all to length. And then I think I'm just going to add like maybe a couple of curly cues and I'm going to hot glue the ribbon here into place just to make sure I only hot glue it like just on four sides just to make sure it doesn't really go anywhere. So then after that, I'm going to go ahead and maybe just add some curly ribbon, maybe a little curly wire and a cute little pumpkin. And I was going to use the acorns and then decided it was just a little too much. So I will go ahead and just finish embellishing this darling little witch hat.
Okay, so I did decide we had to have a little bow on this. So, you know, I don't know what it is about bows. I just feel like they kind of make a project look complete. They make that embellishing look complete. So I thought a yarn bow would be really cute on this. And so I just pulled some yarn from my stash and created this cute little just shoestring bow. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue on some of this little curly ribbon. I actually found this at Dollar Tree. It came on like a stem and it had like four or five of these curly, curly, um, wires. It was, it's kind of like a wire, but a ribbon at the same time, if that makes sense. So I'll just glue that on, glue my bow on, cut my little tail ends to the desired length, and then glue on a cute little pumpkin and probably a little copper wire curly cue. I feel like that is just the right amount of embellishments for our cute little hat. What do y'all think of this? It's kind of cute, right? Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut some cardboard bottoms out for our hats because we're gonna stuff our hats. So I'm going to use the cardboard bottoms to just make it look finished and nice and clean. So we'll go ahead and just trace this round onto, I cut it in fours because I'm gonna cut all four out at the same time, I'll trace it on, cut it, and with my magic wand, ta-da, just like that, it's all cut out. So now we can move on to stuffing the hat, and I'm going to go ahead and use my crochet hook to just kind of push some of that stuffing way up into the tippy top part of our hat, just to kind of help hold this hat's shape and keep it nice and firm. So after I get it stuffed, I will go ahead and glue our little cardboard round to the bottom of this hat, and that will finish off this project. For project number three, we are going to create some really cute faux books. And I'm going to be using some of these vinyl stencils that I cut out on my cutter. I will have all of these patterns available to y'all as a free download, and you'll be able to find that link in the description box. Then I will also use some of these wood pieces that I just pulled from our scrap pile in the wood shop. And then Michael routered all of, he routered three of the edges and one edge we kept flat so that just kind of had that book look to it. All right, y'all, so now I'm going to go ahead and stain this with just some antiquing wax that I've watered down to create a stain of sorts. And to keep the magic going here, I'm gonna give this a few swipes and then use my magic wand to finish off this staining. And I will do the same to our larger piece as well. Now that they have all been stained, we can go ahead and apply our stencil to the piece of wood. And I'm just using some transfer tape, transfer tape to do this. And then I will just position this on the book and you can position it anywhere that you so choose. Then I will come in with a stippling brush to paint this with some black chalk paint. One thing I should mention here too is before you apply your stencil to the piece of wood, you do wanna make sure that that stain has completely dried. Then I will go ahead and press my stencil down, just finger press it down to make sure it's really well secured to prevent any bleeding. But another little trick here to prevent bleeding is to use a stippling brush and to use a pouncing motion, an up and down pouncing. So I dip my brush into the paint and I usually start from the edges and move in towards the center. I did only use one coat of paint here, but I did apply it pretty heavily. And when I remove this stencil, you'll see there are absolutely no bleeding 
bleed throughs whatsoever under this stencil. I just was so impressed with how clean of lines that I had here. And I really think it's because of just using that pouncing motion rather than a rubbing back and forth. Because when you rub back and forth, you're more apt to get paint up underneath that stencil. Look how cute this came out, y'all. So perfectly clean. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just add some bubbles to our little cauldron here and rather than painting these on I thought it would be kind of fun to just use some actual vinyl to do this so I just cut out a whole bunch of circles in various different sizes some of them are in gold some of them some of them are in black and I'm just going to go ahead and apply them so that they're sort of cascading out of our little cauldron and bubbling over And to finish off our spell book, I'm going to go ahead and add just these vinyl letterings to the very, very top. I, um, I'm also just applying this with straight vinyl. I thought it would be kind of cute. It kind of gives it just a little bit of texture maybe and adds just a tiny tinge of 3D effect to this, if you will. So I'm just going to go ahead and rub those on. And just like that, we have completed our first little book. I think this turned out really cute. I, I think it's just kind of cute and whimsical. And I like the overall effect. All right, let's move on to the next one. This one, I'm going to do this really neat witch silhouette that I found. And I'm also going to um, stipple some black chalk paint on this in the same exact technique that I did with our cauldron. So I will apply the stencil, make sure it's really well adhered before removing the transfer tape. And then I will go ahead and stipple on some black chalk paint. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and add the title of our book to the bottom of this as well. And I'm just calling this one Book of Charms. And I did not um, make a pattern of this for y'all because I figured you, you know, if you have a cutting machine, you could go ahead and just use any font that you so choose to create this one. So again, I just made sure that my stencil was really well adhered to the wood round or the wood board before removing my transfer tape. And then we will go ahead and stipple on all of our paint. I love how this turned out, y'all. What do you think? You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think of our cute little books. All right, let's move on to project number four. So for this one, I took these boxwood picks just outside and I spray painted them all with some matte black chalk paint or no, rust just Rust-Oleum matte black paint and I spray I spray painted one side flipped them over spray painted the other side and then I let them dry for about 24 hours because I wanted to make sure that that paint was really well cured so we are going to make some cute little nap napkin rings and I am just using this very heavy gauge wire here I don't remember what gauge this is for sure, but it is a pretty heavy gauge wire. And to form my ring, I'm just using the rim of this little jar that I have. So you could use any jar or a glass to form your ring. Then I cut it off and leaving a little bit of extra wire so that I can wrap it around to hold my ring into place. And then I will come in with my little needle nose flat pliers here to kind of finish wrapping it around and flatten out that wire so that it doesn't have like any pokey sharp edges on it. To add the picks to our wire rings here, I am just using the whole pick and then I use this bottom stem to wrap it around our wire ring. And then I just start folding them, bending them, wrapping them around the wire to kind of get them to form to the best of my ability around that ring. And 
I will be honest, this really didn't turn out the way I had envisioned them looking because I make wreaths all the time, but I'm used to using an actual wreath form. But with this, it was a little, a little, a little bit wonky to work with. So they didn't come out exactly the way I envisioned. But at the end, I was like, it's okay. It's Halloween. This is for a Halloween project. So it's all right that they all look a little bit wonky. They all did come out looking very different as well. So I just played with this, wrapped, bent, formed it around that ring to the best of my ability. And this is how they turned out. Like I said, they all four came out a little bit different, but they look all right. They're kind of fun. And I think it'll go really well with the Halloween vignette that we are going to create. So let's go ahead and add some napkins to these and see how they look with the napkins in them. So I just take the napkin, wrap the center part through my finger. So we're gonna create this to look kind of like a ghost, if you will. And then I will just run it right through that napkin ring and fluff it and play with it until it looks as ghostly as I could get it to look. normally decorate my home for Halloween. I usually just keep our decor with neutral fallscapes around the house. But this year, I thought it would be a lot of fun to maybe create a fun Halloween tablescape for our Halloween dinner this year. I usually have the kids over for Halloween dinner because it's just my excuse to get all the kids here and have some family fun. So I thought I would walk you all through the process of how I incorporated all of our DIYs today into a really fun tablescape. I hope you all enjoy this and get some inspiration from these ideas. To start building this tablescape, I'm going to begin by placing a table runner on the table. And I would like to have had a little bit runner than I did, but I am just using things from my stash. Then I'm going to place one of our books that we made on this book stand. I'm not... I got, I'm not sure what this is called, like a frame stand or what whatnot, but I'm going to place that in this, um, just off center a little bit from the table, place our book in it, and then I'm going to put this cute broom behind and then place a few more books and then put our spell book on top of that. Then I will come in and start placing some candles, a little vase of some fun wheat and some hops and just keep filling this in and placing things here and there. And of course, you know, anytime I'm building a vignette like this, things get moved, they get changed. You know, it's just, I just keep building and playing and and until things start to feel the way I want them and they start to look a little bit co cohesive and they flow really well together. So I'm placing all the candlesticks and then of course we will come in and fill them with candles. <laughs> To create the place setting, I'm going to start with these darling little placemats that we made a couple weeks ago. And if you missed that video, I'll have it linked in the description box for y'all. Then I will place a simple black plate, put our sweet little jack-o'-lanterns right in the center, put a cute lamp in there, and I will also have those in the description box for y'all as well. Top our jack-o'-lanterns with the hat, add some stemware, some drinkware, our darling little ghosts we made a couple of weeks ago. Then we will add in some cutlery, our napkins, and then I'm going to let magic do the rest. <laughs> And just like that, we've created a really fun Halloween tablescape. I think this came out great. There's a lot of charm, a lot of whimsy to this, and it definitely says Halloween. Y'all have to let me know what you think of this tablescape.
Alrighty, my dear friends, that is going to wrap up our episode for this week. I am so glad that y'all were here. I hope you enjoyed this and that you got some fun. You forgot something. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely right. I completely and totally forgot. I had a fun little bonus for y'all today. So let's go take a sneak peek at that. I thought it would be a lot of fun to create a caramel apple charcuterie board to go with our Halloween dinner this year. So to create this, I've got this cute little set of cauldrons and I will have this whole set linked in the description box for y'all if you are interested. So to start, I'm just going to fill up all the mini cauldrons with little dippings of candies and sprinkles. And for the melting pots, I'm using some espresso chocolate, some caramel, some peanut butter, and some white chocolate. And then of course we will add in the apples. And that is it for this. It creates just this fun, playful addition to our Halloween dinner. And to make sure this is fit for serving to our guests, Michael's gonna test things out for me. All righty, my dear friends, that is for real this time going to wrap up today's episode. <laughs> I am so glad that y'all were here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that I have somehow given you some inspiration and some fun ideas for your Halloween decor or tablescapes or however it is that you celebrate Halloween. <laughs> Thank you all again so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. We are going to be whipping up some of my favorite fall treats and drinks. So come see me again next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. I just look so, so silly. Booing up some. <laughs> Go grab your magic wands and let's bibbity bobbity boo. Mmm. <laughs>